Okay, so this question, extremely fucking weird for USMLE purposes. I'm covering this with you because this is on the offline NBMEs for step one, and they're known to reuse questions. The diagnosis is lingual thyroid. Students say, what the fuck is that? I agree, weird. Uh, what in the world is lingual, thy lingual thyroid? Um, I had done well in the USMLEs, and I've been tutoring for years. And I encountered this for the first time when I was doing this offline question with students. Um, so this is between the NBME th uh, 13 to 18 batch. Uh, this question popped up. Uh, so basically you have a newborn who has uh, an elevated serum TSH, low, low T3, T4, so hypothyroidism. And they say that there's no thyroid gland palpable, but that there is an anterior cervical mass high in the neck. Lingual thyroid during the embryologic descent of the thyroid tissue from the base of the tongue uh, fails to descend properly so we can get ec an ectopic thyroid mass in the tongue that's literally what the literature says if you google lingual thyroid it says that uh, there's ectopic thyroid tissue mainly in the base of the tongue and patients tend to be the neonates tend to be hypothyroid okay so uh, and they often won't have other thyroid tissue so once again, just weird. Uh, you don't need to know uh, in superfluous detail really beyond that. You just have to say, okay, uh, newborn, hypothyroidism, like mass in the tongue slash anterior, anteriorly it's high in the neck. Uh, that's going to be lingual thyroid. Now, just to address some of the others. Actually, before I even get there, I should note the contrast with thyro thyroglossal duct cyst, which they'll give you a kid who's usually a few years of age or older. And they'll, they'll describe it in a couple ways. The most buzzy way is a mass in the central neck that uh, elevates with swallowing or protrusion of the tongue. Question doesn't have to say that. They can also say that there's a mass inferior to the hyoid bone. And the kids are going to be uh, almost always euthyroid, okay? So it's not going to be a neonate who has hypothyroidism. Uh, so looking at the other answer choices, iodine uh, channel gene mutation, that's just a distractor, decided to be an asshole there. Uh, choices B and C, so antibody against thyroperoxidase, antibody against, or anti-microsomal antibody are the same thing. And that's for, those are antibodies that you see in Hashimoto thyroiditis, so chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis, same thing. So uh, anti-thyroperoxidase, aka anti-microsomal antibody, and you can also have antibodies against thyroglobulin, so that's, uh, that's Hashimoto, that's hypothyroidism, and you're going to see that usually... Um, teenagers or older. I've seen on NBME questions a 14-year-old girl who had Hashimoto. Uh, you don't want to pigeonhole things and assume it always has to be an adult. Antibody against TSH receptor, exceedingly high yield for Graves' disease, okay? So the if, if you really delve into the literature, some students get pedantic and say that uh, you can rarely have a T an anti-TSH receptor antibody in Hashimoto. Never answer that on the US anti-TSH receptor antibody. Will never be Hashimoto on the USMLE. It's always going to be Graves. It's a hyperthyroidism. It's an activating antibody. It's called TSI, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. Okay, so you have an immunoglobulin TSI that stimulates the TSH receptor and uh, causes hyperthyroidism. So uh, that is that is the mechanism for Graves' disease. We could talk a lot about these conditions, their treatments, etc. But the take home for this point is you just say, okay, weird factoid noted. Uh, Newborn with hypothyroidism, uh, lingual thyroid is something that I should have in my differentials. And as I said, this is on the offline NBMEs for step one. That's it.